how you can tell if it's a real human or if it's a reptilian, and they've got like synthetic skin, you know? Like if you can tell if it's like real flesh or if it's just disguise. Well, I sure hope to high hell that works. And, uh, hello! Hey, indie, indie mogul folks. Hey, indie moglers. Hey, yo. I'm Captain Randolph Jackson, and I'm Brigadoon Tierney. For those of you just joining us, we're West Haven Brook Productions, again. Today is lesson two in our series of instructional videos for the Awesome Directors Project, provided to you by Indie Mogul. What are we covering in today's lesson, John? Well, Brigadier, this week we'll be talking about screen fighting. <laughs> Last week, we asked you to list your favorite car chases from a movie. So this is West Havenbrook's top three choices from what you put that we agree with. Terminator 2, Road Warrior, and Back to the Future. Honorable mention goes to Bullet. Now if you'll excuse me. For me, fight choreography is less about being a tough guy and more about creating an illusion. You ever see The Expendables? It's like that. But this is real life, you chumps. Hey, hey. <clears throat> uh, bring it, bring, bring it down. Down, down, down a little. That's too much. If you approach a movie fight like it's a real fight or a chance to prove how tough you are, you're missing the point, you chumps! Nothing in a movie fight is worth getting hurt over. No matter how much you think it's worth it, it's not worth it. You chump. What that also ends up meaning, coincidentally, is that you don't want to put anything into your fight scene that doesn't serve the story or give insight to the character. Stop it! Let's move on. Breakdown! Illusion of contact! You're planning your choreography, executing that choreography, and... You can fake contact to the body by actually making light contact. This is called pulling your punches and kicks. So this is what it looks like when I really punch the bag. And this is what it looks like when I'm pulling my punches. Now I'm going to demonstrate on my friend Kyle to show how much this usually doesn't hurt. <laughs> but you can also add a sound effect and have your stuntman react as if it's painful. Uh, which one was I supposed to demonstrate? The real hit or the, the pull hit? If you aren't used to doing this, you need to practice before trying it on a real person. For face hits, you don't want to actually make contact with the person's face. You have to create the illusion by making sure that your hand or foot are in line with the camera and the person's face. Well, I'm going to demonstrate. <laughs> For instance, if the victim is facing the camera, then my hand or foot will need to pass between the camera and their face. If the victim is facing away from the camera, then their head needs to be between the camera and my hand at the moment of impact. By doing this, you can actually maintain a pretty safe distance while still creating the illusion of a painful hit. For all of this, you should at least practice controlling your limbs before you put another person into the situation. Here at West Havenbrook, when we're creating choreography for our fight scenes, sometimes we like to look at reference material created by other people in the past. There have been literally thousands of fight scenes created over cinema's 100 plus years of glorious history. Here are five of West Havenbrook's favorite action movies for fight scene reference material in no particular order. Number one, Fists of Legend. Number two, The Matrix Reloaded, but not Revelations. Number three, Unleashed. Ooh, that's a good one. And number four, Enter the Dragon. And number five, well, it's the Red Letter Media's 70 minute review of A Phantom Menace. Create choreography that showcases your abilities. Don't do any moves that your hero can't actually pull off. This isn't gonna make you look cooler, it's gonna make you look stupid. Take Eric Beck, for example. He doesn't know how to kick, but he tried it and failed. Would you look at this? Oh, look at that. Would you look at this? Just, just look at it. If you want your hero to perform a certain move, you should at least learn to do it convincingly before you ask him to do it on the set. Trust me, it just won't work. On the upcoming episode of The Danger Element, I worked with my old friend Ural Padilla, who I've made literally dozens of fight scenes with, so we can anticipate each other pretty well and come up with new choreography without a lot of communication. This usually won't be the case. Especially if you're working with idiots. It's especially if your fight scene has more than two people involved. 
one of the tricks I like to use for this is to assign a number to each of the moves in the sequence and actually count it off like advance. This sounds ridiculous, but sometimes it works amazingly well, especially for scenes that have multiple attackers. You'll have to go back and replace the audio later so that you can't hear the counting. But that's okay, because you're a filmmaker and you edit too. You do these things too. When filming action, you want to take the camera and really make it a participant of everybody's choreography. A great way to do that would be watching the BFX episode HEA! This video, we taught you how to do that, all, all that. If you watch this episode, you'll get to learn all kinds of tricks about camera placement. I highly recommend that you watch it. If you, click it. Once you have your fight scene filmed and edited, it's time for sound design. This will take your fight from looking like this to this. And Jake the Snake is putting Damien onto the Macho Man. You, you are in your 30s, right? Thanks for joining us for another West Havenbrook edition of Indie Mogul's Awesome Directors Project. We'd like to invite you again to watch episodes 1 through 4 of The Danger Element. This will all be in preparation for uh, the grand release of episode 5 at the end of the month. And join us next week for a tutorial on lighting. Yes, we're going to show you how to light a fight scene. <laughs> watch it. <laughs>